you've conducted a literature review, and now you have a research question. Let's take a look at the data. Raw data consists of long lists of numbers and labels that don't seem to be very informative. Raw data lacks context. Exploratory data analysis is what you use to make sense of the data. You do this by converting data from its raw form to a form that makes sense, that has context, that tells the story you want to tell. Basically, exploratory data analysis consists of organizing and summarizing raw data, looking for important features and patterns in the data, looking for any striking deviations from those patterns, and interpreting your findings in the context of the problem or research question. We begin exploratory data analysis by looking at one variable at a time, also called univariate analysis. In order to convert raw data into useful information, we need to summarize and then examine the distribution of any variables of interest. By distribution of a variable, we mean what values the variable takes and how often the variable takes those values. If we were studying a small number of observations, we could do this with a pencil and paper, a calculator, or even in our heads. The data sets you're working with often have thousands of observations. Working with such large samples is only achievable if we use statistical software. In the beginning, it may feel like you're learning another language. Basically, you are. As you work through your project, you should begin to feel more comfortable implementing the various decisions you'll be making about the data. When you need help, seek it from your course moderator, professor, your peers, or from course discussions. Remember, we stated exploratory data analysis begins by looking at one variable at a time. This is called univariate or descriptive analysis. In order to convert raw data into useful information, we need to summarize and examine the distribution of any variables of interest. The variables of interest are the variables of interest to you, the researcher. In answering your research questions, addressing your research problem, and telling the story you wish to tell with your research. By distribution of a variable, we mean what values the variable takes and how often the variable takes those values. Here's an example. A random sample of 1,200 U.S. college students were asked the following questions as part of a larger survey. What's your perception of your own body? Do you feel that you're overweight? Or about right? Or underweight? This table shows part of the data, five of the 1,200 observations. Information that would be interesting to get from this data includes what percentage of the sample students fall into each category, or how are students divided across the three body type image categories? Are they equally divided? If not, do the percentages follow some kind of pattern? There's no way that we can answer these questions by looking at the raw data which are in the form of a long list of 1,200 responses. That's just not very useful. However, all these questions will be easily answered once we summarize and look at the frequency distribution of the variable body image. That is, once we summarize how often each of the categories occurs. In order to summarize the distribution of a categorical variable, we first create a table of the different values or categories the variable takes how many times each variable occurs, which is the count, and more importantly, how often each variable occurs, which is expressed by converting the counts to percentages. Now that we've summarized the distribution of the body image variable, let's go back and interpret the results in the context of the questions that we post. What percentage of the sample students fall into each category? How are students divided across the three body image categories, and are they equally divided? You can see that most of the samples, that is 71.3%, felt that their weight was about right, and that a comparatively small percentage felt underweight at 9.2%. The overweight category was 19.6%. I'm interested in looking at the association between how much a person smokes, that is, quantity and frequency of smoking, and the presence or absence of nicotine dependence. Going back to the NISARC codebook, you may recall that I have a number of variables that measure smoking behavior and nicotine dependence. 
It's the actual name of the variable, rather than the longer descriptive name, that I'll include in my program in order to generate frequency distributions. I have the names of each of the variables circled here in red. Are there particular rows in the data set, that is, individual observations, that you want to keep and others that you want to exclude? For example, we're most interested in the association between smoking and nicotine dependence in young adults who may still be establishing their smoking patterns. Therefore, we decide to examine only those adults who are 25 or younger and exclude all adults older than the age of 25. We also decide that we want to focus on recent smokers rather than individuals who've smoked more than a year ago. So the original research question for our example is further clarified to include the association between smoking and nicotine dependence, but only among young adults who have smoked in the past 12 months. The research question is not changed. Rather, the question will be asked based only on a subset of the observations that are available in a specific data set that will help answer the research question.